Hey, uh, welcome back guys. We're playing some more Ultimate General Civil War today. Um, this playthrough, we're going to start a new campaign and we're going to showcase uh, Johnny H13 and Panda Kraut's um, modded rebalance mod. And it is currently at 1.28.2, but I believe now their latest version is like T10 of 1.28.2. Um, but I have tailored the game and changed some of the text files a little bit to kind of uh, give it a little bit of a more realistic feel in my opinion. I've rebalanced a couple things. I've increased some of the size multipliers for both the South Start and the Union Start. And some of the overall like uh, scaling multipliers and weapon uh, grade multipliers. And we'll talk more on that as we go through, but just to start off with a brand new campaign. Um, I'm going to take a little bit different approach to the start of this, right from the beginning with uh, some of the different choices that we have here. I think I'm going to go more of a heavy recon route, and we'll see how, how we get through first bull run and see if that's a viable strategy. But I've got about 400 hours into the game, so I'm, I'm certainly not new, but certainly not the best either. But we're gonna go with Tactician, then we're gonna go with Infantry, and I think we're gonna finish off with uh, Politics. And we're gonna do a South playthrough. I always feel like that's just a little bit more fun um, we're not going to give ourselves too much of a challenge, but we're not playing, you know, bubble-blowing baby difficulty. We're going to go Brigadier, see where we get. But, uh, let's see here. we got three in politics, one in economy, three in training, one in army org, and two in recon. I want to try to get this recon up to at least four, so the weapon recovery rate is a one-to-one. -one. Or at least that's how I think it is. But this is a very useful stat. Most people don't put enough points into this early on. A lot of players, especially South playthroughs, they want to go through and do heavy politics. But I think this is going to be an interesting playthrough. But the first mission, most people know, it's uh, a fort on the Potomac. we got to take the fort from the Union. One thing right off the bat that some people might notice too is that these units start a little bit larger than they normally would. Uh, for people who have played before, you're going to notice that right off the bat. But just to explain what I'm doing here, I'm going to go through and instead of going straight ahead where some Union skirmishers deploy, I'm going to flank that position. I'm going to go a little bit further left. And what I'm doing here is I know from playing this before that there are two Union units that come down this road on this left hand side and I want to outflank those units and get to them before they can reinforce this fort. So we're going to bypass these skirmishers here and we're going to take our men and move far left. And hopefully we can cut these guys off and isolate them before they can get to the fort. I'm also going to go ahead and detach some skirmishers from my bigger units here and use them to help flank and maneuver and pin these guys in place before my larger brigades, which move slower, can get up to the line. We should be making contact with them any time now. If they're coming out right here, that tells me that these Union Brigades are over in this area somewhere at this moment. Even though we haven't spotted them yet. We're going to inch our way forward and just see if we can't make contact. Because once I get them to a point where they're starting to waver, I'm going to open up on them and uh, get the cavalry on them. Try to capture those two units here. 
It's about 400 men. I'll be happy if we can capture both of those. To cover quickly some of the changes that I was speaking on earlier, I have gone ahead and given the Union Army a 10% increase in size in general throughout the entirety of the campaign, changed their scaling multiplier to 1.1, and I believe that gives them about a 10% increase. I've also gone ahead and changed their uh, weapon scaling multiplier to 2.25, two and a quarter. So. Um, from what little I've played so far, they have much better weapons than you, like, right off the bat. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if at full, first bull run, the majority of their army is armed with Springfield 61s. Which, I feel like, I mean, even though early war, each side was getting whatever they could, I feel like it gives it more of a challenge, and a more authentic feel, because the Union should always have really good arms. Yep, and there are those Union Brigades, and the time it took us to get rid of those guys, they're up here now. Let's see if I can't catch them in the tail. Cut them off. Speeding this up just a little bit. It looks like the last of our reinforcements are here. Go ahead and skip through that. We're going to push these guys straight up as quick as we can get them. I'm going to move Hexamer up on the right to try to engage this guy while he's in the trees yet. Slow them down, and then once we break and route these guys or capture them, we can swing up and get him too. See, they've already given up. Perfect. quickly grab some skirmishers off of these guys and get them ahead. Hopefully if we hit them in the back they'll shake out in the line and return fire. But I'm hoping to pinch these skirmishers here. But I want to distract the third Ohio from getting a, a volley in on Hexamer. They should be somewhere right home, oh, right there. Get them, boys, get them. There we go.
I move these skirmishers out on the right. Get these guys out of here. They already have 1842s. Now that we got that all wrapped up, we will speed this up a bit. Try to get these guys in the line. Keep them out of artillery range. I want to keep my good brigades, because we know that we're going to keep Kemper and Siegfried um, after the battle. So we want to maintain a minimal amount of casualties from them. So we're going to push these three up and take the fort with them and flank with their skirmishers and Crocker. We're going to hold these guys in reserve. And to make sure that these guys maintain their spacing, I'm not going to put them on individual units. I'm going to give them a movement order beyond the enemy unit, and once they get within range, they'll do their own volleys and engage. But until that time, we are going to do just this to maintain that spacing. So that way they're not bunched up on each other and trying to shoot and units are blocked, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure plenty of people who watch this will already be veteran players and know what's going on. I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence and be like, oh, I've played this game a thousand times. I have to explain things like that to me. I've met people like that. <laughs> also been that person too, so. Um, we'll have this fort in no time. We'll be on to the second half, and this this first mission goes pretty pretty quick, especially when you have the files set the way that I have. And I kind of like it that way because when you're trying different perks and different like playthroughs, it makes it easier to get through like just the first grind of the first couple battles. But once you get to Shiloh, that's when the challenge is really there. Um, the Union definitely has a lot of advantages, even though we kind of breeze through this first part here. It's not like we've taken everything from them. In fact, we've given them quite a bit. But we're going to go ahead and give these guys the bayonet and try to capture them real quick. And hopefully we haven't taken too many casualties doing this. But I am being somewhat aggressive. We'll get those Ohio boys out of the way so they don't get set free. I've had a lot of times when you go into a melee, melee like that, um, enemy units that surrender, they have a chance, like, if they get a little too close to a friendly unit, they they instantly come back and start fighting again. It's a pain. But, seven seconds here. We took that pretty quick. We'll be on to part two. All right. So, part two. We defend the fort that we just took, and there's some ironclads out in the water. Now these guns are automatically going to target these ironclads. And I don't anticipate them being up for very long. And then we'll have this artillery to help defend the fort. Um, we do get a little bit more troops at, at the second part of the second half. But um, just like they explain here, the enemy infantry, by and large, they're going to come down on this left-hand side. And they're going to bunch up right here. So what I've found is if I detach skirmishers and then quickly pull them along with one brigade out into the trees over here on the left, or on the right, um, and I hide them so the enemy AI can't see them, I can wait until they bunch up here and then come in from the back and encircle them. And that, that tactic works pretty good. And you can already see they're starting to come up. I've sped it up a little bit. The last of our reinforcements are coming in. All right. Now, now that the battle is underway, we'll get these skirmishers out here.
any time now. Two more brigades should be coming up. Siegfried to the left of his units. Try to try to sweep in from the back. Our supply train is always in the rear here. That's just free real estate. You chase the general away, grab the supply train. And then I don't want to rush this cavalry into these guns. But we might end up doing that because this is shaping up where everybody that could help is just a bit too far away. We're going to send him to chase that general, get these supplies out of here. And hopefully those two brigades will be here soon. Tell these guys to run, to get them in there quickly. Try to get a volley off. Alright, the last of our troops are here. I feel like these guys are a little far forward. I'm gonna get Canfield up here too. We're gonna try to find these skirmishers that just routed out this way and then hit these guns from behind. That might have been a bad move. I can't tell just yet, but I don't want to lose too many of these cavalrymen. Even if we just get these guns to turn. We'll go ahead and detach more skirmishers. like we're doing good so far. Speed this up a little bit for expediency's sake. I have to say I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm eager to get into the, to the meat of this campaign and get the bull run. I, I'm, I have to say, probably one of my favorite things about this game is just sitting in the headquarters, organizing the army, and arming the troops, and figuring out like the order of battle, and how we're going to do things. I think that that's something that a lot of players don't put enough thought into. Shift these skirmishers right, make room for Canfield's brigade to get in here, and start hitting these guys on the side. Want to get them close. Gave up, which is good. I'm hesitant to send in the cavalry, too. I don't want to get them pushed up before we uh, can route some of these guys and make sure they're on the run. This 
something that I didn't mention, but I will just make note of now. I have changed the percentage size that skirmishers detach at. So the larger the brigade, the larger the amount of skirmishers they will deploy. And I found, because um, the Union Army now has the same advantage, and that can be a very serious thing, especially in the bigger battles where you're just outnumbered, because they have not only big brigades, but they detach a lot of groups of, like, 900 to 1,000, 1,200 sometimes. And with that much fire all focused on, like, one of your big brigades from, like, three small units and another brigade, it can route your men and break your line pretty easy. So it's it can be quite the advantage for the AI. Go ahead and pull Bernie off the ramparts and rush him down. Trying to get these skirmishers up. Got him in a pretty good pile now. everybody routing and wavering like that, we may be able to capture a lot of them if we charge all at one time. Which is really what I'm hoping for. I want to get good capture numbers early on. There we go. Alright, very good. So we lost 66 killed of our own, 186 wounded, 14 missing, but we got quite a few and captured quite a few. Um, one of the other things that I changed is the baseline weapon recovery is now 30%. And I feel like that reflects reality in, like, if you win a battle and you kill 20,000 men, you should at least be able to recover a few thousand rifles from the field. Um, and that's, that's reflected here. I mean, you can see clear as day, even this early on, we've gotten quite a few weapons. And kill counts were good, everything was kosher. But we're going to go ahead and gear up for the next mission, and then we'll probably end this one, and then uh, come back another day when we start in on Newport News or uh, First Bull Run. But we're going to talk a little bit now about how to set up your divisions and your order of battle. Um, some good ways to think about setting up your units, especially for some of these early battles. I like to balance army organization as I progress through the campaign. I don't like to put more points into this than what's absolutely necessary at the time that you win battles. So early on you can only bring a certain amount of brigades to each battle. And that's why I don't put a million points into this because I only bring what I need to and what I can. And I try to maximize out medicine, politics, and hardly ever do I put points into economy. I just bite the bullet and pay the price. Um, logistics is important, but recon, I can't stress this enough, not enough people appreciate the reconnaissance perk. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put in three points now to army organization because we have one battle before Bull Run. We should be able to bring eight or twelve brigades to Bull Run. But I know at Newport News we only get to bring four. But I want to make sure that the maximum number of men that we can bring in a brigade is 3,000 because we've got 9,000 recruits and I want some weighty brigades for Newport News. So, I'm going to go into the barracks, and I like to like to get as many high-tier officers as I can, but we're probably only going to go with one of these for the moment. Get a brigadier, put him in, 
in charge of first division and that should uh raise the command of uh and please 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 read read the notes that they put in here it'll really help your understanding of the game and it'll make playing a lot easier but we can pack these brigades now with some pretty weighty figures probably not going to bring any artillery to the next fight we're going to bring the maximum number of infantry that we can get Yes, sir. We might even bring a cavalry unit, depending on how much money we have left over at the end of this. And going quickly back to career, we can see how many men in a cavalry unit we can bring, which is about 800. But we'll need a pretty good high-ranking officer to handle that many cavalry. It scales differently depending on what type of unit you're trying to bring So, we have some two pretty good veteran brigades. We've got some decent stats on them already. We're going to need that because the Union's a little tougher than they normally are. So, we're going to go ahead and just get ourselves yes, sir. another colonel. Give them some good Mississippi rifles. And make sure that we don't spend every last penny we have on this. About 2,000 boys. Then we're going to go ahead and get a cavalry unit. Go ahead and get many of these boys as we can. I like I like to do round figures. You'll always see me rounding. Um and he's actually not a high enough rank. You know, with a colonel we could probably put him with an infantry unit and have two thousand men easy, but cavalry unit and artillery they just function a little bit different. So we'll just go ahead and pay for a brigadier right off the bat. Hopefully he doesn't get killed. And I also really like to name my units. I like to give them custom names. Kemper's Brigade calls Siegfried's Germans. Dragoons because they have they have carbines. Because these guys aren't really experienced, I'm going to call them home guard. Because, you know, when I when I think of inexperienced units, I think of militia or, like, the Richmond home guard. They're not the front line best of the best. They're, they're the inexperienced guys that are sitting in trenches. So, we're going to go ahead and just get an extra officer now. Spend the points, take the morale penalty. We'll go ahead and save, and when we come back in the next one, we'll do uh, the Battle of Newport News. But uh, thanks for watching, guys.